when people are wrestling with despair and discouragement, when they are constantly inundated with that kind of messaging, they give up. And the truth is that we were born and made for this time. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Conversations with John and Lisa Bevere. We are so happy that you've joined us today on the podcast. Yeah, I miss being with you. I know. Yeah. You were um, you were working hard or I what was, was happening? I was oh, sick. A little was, under the weather, yes, yeah. Was, you were you were not sick. feeling well at all that and in day. in a fever. That would have been an interesting podcast with me with a fever. But Arden did a great job. He is his mother's son. And uh, he just... I was so proud of him. But listen, we um, we have a lot to talk about today. But let me say, first of all, it's so important that you rate, review and even subscribe yeah. to the podcast. What this does is this gets it out to more people. If you feel like we are helping you with the word of God, with our discussions that we have, then please, please do this. And if you do write a review, you might just might get it read on the show. Yeah, well, we're not doing a review today, John. So the truth is we are recording right now on day five of Israeli war with Hamas. And this is crazy, John. I just came back recently from Amsterdam ministering. And yep. while I was there, I was given this beautiful card and the front of the card says Iran. And I just want to read what they said. She said, Dear Pastors Lisa and John Bevere, we are very grateful to you for all the blessings we have received from your teachings. We, you have a great role in and a positive influence on the salvation of Iranians and the healing and freedom they receive in their lives. We Iranians are proud of you. I know people who have secretly published all your books in Iran and benefit from your lessons and teaching in free Iran. We will see you one day. This is a small gift from Iran to say the Iranians love you. I just felt like it was wow. so important, John, that we put this out there, that there are people, there are believers in Iran. There are believers in Israel. There are believers in Palestine. There are believers all over the Middle East yes. crying out for peace. Yes. Do not support terrorist activities. They are also just really, they're just like, we need to pray for everyone. And when we pray for Israel, we pray for everyone who shelters in that nation. I've had so many people say, why are you praying for Israel? Why aren't you praying for Palestine? We are praying for everyone. We are praying peace for the region. It's God's will that all men should be saved and come Absolutely. to the knowledge of the truth. And until that judgment day comes, mm -hmm. our responsibility is to pray for the salvation of all people. Now, we want to especially pray for the protection of God's people. And I want to emphasize again, there are born again, God loving believers in Palestine. There are born again, God loving believers in Israel. And let's all remember that it was a Jew who died for us and a Jew is seated. It says the man, Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and man. And that man is a Jew. And so and I know we're, com we're commanded to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes. yes. And, and I want to say that there's neither Jew nor Greek. The Bible's very clear. We don't know Jesus after the flesh any longer. Okay. We know him by the spirit. That is so true. However, I do know that nations and tribes are going to stand before the throne of God, which means there's something unique that God loves about us being nations. Now, nations means a group of ethnic people with a con or excuse me, a group of people with a common bond. Okay, so you can have a nation of pilots. You can have a nation of bodybuilders. You do have the nations of Israel. You do have the nation of of China, etc. Yeah. Okay. And I, I do want to say that God must enjoy that variety. And we as his children should enjoy one another's differences because God is the one who made us and created us in these different, you know, ethnic groups. And so he says, all these ethnic groups are going to stand before my throne. Mm -hmm. And the one who's going to be seated on that throne, even though we don't know him after the flesh any longer, is a Jewish man named yeah, Jesus. A descendant of David. So we are believing. We are believing for peace. We are believing for outpouring. We are believing that out of the agony and out of the ashes, that truth and revival will be born for all people. Yes. For all people. So, John... 
this has been a long, long season. Long stint. Of crisis. Crisis after, after crisis. Crisis <laughs> after crisis. And I know today we're going to be talking about crisis fatigue. Yep. And here, here's the thing. People are getting so overwhelmed, so worn down. We are not meant to live in a constant state of fear and crisis. And we actually really want to speak life and hope and strength and faith into your life. Well, I'm. it's our hope by the end of this podcast or the end of next podcast, because we might extend this into two, that you're going to have joy. And joy is not conditional to circumstances. Joy is an inward force. And so there's a big difference. Happiness is circumstance-based. Joy is a force. And we are believing that you're going to have abundant joy because with joy, you draw from the wells of salvation. So let's just stop and think about all that we have endured since 2020 began. Yeah. All right. We just listed some of it. We've had political unrest. We've had mass shootings. We've had the BLM crisis and the division between uh, the different groups. We've had gender crisis. We've had COVID pandemic. We've had a war in Ukraine. We have fires in Maui. And other assorted places. We yep. have massive hurricanes that have come through. We have a war in Israel. We have inflation. We have natural disasters that we've had to deal with. Trains being derailed. And here's another one that a lot of people talk about, and that's supply chain issues. And then there's always the one that everybody says is the most important, and that is climate change. We are yep. constantly being told that the climate is the cause of everything. Now, and it's a constant state of unrest, yep. distrust, strife, stress. Everybody, that, I, I mean, I don't know anybody that trusts the government anymore. I don't know anybody who feels like they're hearing the truth from the media. I don't know anybody. And there's this constant uh, pointing out of what is wrong without pointing anybody to the one who can make things right. And then that's not even to mention the personal situations people, people are going loved through. Ones. Yep. They've There's lost loved ones. Higher for, suicide. You've got divorces that are going on. You've got people that are going through the heartbreak of their, you know, maybe their son or, or excuse me, their daughter uh, going through an abortion. It would have been their grandchild. I mean, there's all kinds of pressures on people right now. And so there's an expression, an old expression, that it's just one thing after another. Bad news, more bad news. When can I get a break? Well, I've never heard that before. Yeah. When can I get a break? When okay. can I get a break? So here's the good news. You were made for this time. Okay. Listen to what Jesus says about this time. Matthew 24. This is verses six through eight. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. So we got rumors of wars. We got a rumor of war of China going to war, of China yeah, and Taiwan. And, 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 our, and our nation and, and possibly our, going our to war. Our nation possibly going right. to war. All right. So wars and rumors of war. Now listen to Jesus's words. See that you are not troubled. Yeah. And that's what we're going to talk about. Yep. Helping them to not be troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. Now remember, it's not just, you know, nations that have flags that we recognize as territories of land. A nation could be a group of one group of, that has a common interest against another group of common interests. So we have a lot of nations at war or at odds inside the United States. So, so we could actually maybe guess that that would be uh, the trans community at odds with the non-trans community or right. the LGBT community against the non, I mean, there is constant division, constant, you're either for me or against me, people constantly making people choose sides. So Jesus, so true, said kingdom will rise up against kingdom. There are going to be famines. There's going to be pestilence. There is going to be earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of birth pangs. Actually, my version says sorrows. Sorrows. Yes. Yeah. It's the beginning of sorrows. Yep. Now, here's the thing that we, we and, and we'll jump into this. You're, this news is going to become, you know, these crises, I should say, are going to become so intense that Jesus actually said in Luke 21, verse 26, that men's hearts will actually fail them from the fear 
and expectation. So I want you to understand this. This isn't that it's actually happening. It's the fear of something happening. It's the expectation of something happening. I mean, there are people right now, the fear that is going into their hearts because of all the people that are crossing our border down in Texas. I mean, it's stirring a lot of fear in people. It's creating hopeless expectations, fearful expectations. And to be clear, John, we're not saying that's not a problem. Yeah, that is a problem. The, all of the the lack of border control, all the lack right. of not knowing who is coming in, not knowing where they're coming from. We're not saying that that's not a problem, but we're saying you cannot allow those things to cause your heart to be troubled. So when people's hearts fail them, they actually, it isn't just heart attacks. It's they actually do things they never dreamed they could do. They cave in cowardice. They slander. There's division. They abandon people. Yeah. They actually don't stay true to their hearts. Yeah. And this is why there's so many people right now that they need a heart exchange, John. They, they, their hearts are failing them. And I love that when we get born again, God gives us a brand new heart. He doesn't, he takes out the stony heart that is all about self-protect, self-protect, self-protect. And he gives us a heart of flesh where we can have empathy without having crisis fatigue, mm -hmm. that we can have this difference to have compassion and empathy, to understand people are hurting but to know what's outside of our control, to be able to be the gatekeepers of our hearts so that we are allowing more of the spirit of God to come in, more of God's perspective than the media's perspective, than the government's perspective, than our friend's perspective, more of God's perspective. You know, you and I, uh, we, always, we always talk about how important it is that the first thing that you start your day with, like if you turn on your phone right away, you're going to be inundated with bad news. And those kind of bad news, those aren't going to be things that are going to tenderize your heart or keep your heart protected. Those are going to be the kind of things that are going to cause your heart to fail because we want to actually put the word of God in. So out of the abundance of our heart that, you know, that there's good things coming out, not just frightened words and scary words. And, you know, we all have friends who, who are, beautiful Christian people who have been living on, in a constant state of reaction yeah. to what's going on. And when our hearts fail us, we react. And when our hearts are aligned with God's spirit, we act. Well, think about it. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, right? because out of it flow the forces yeah. of life. Yeah. Think about Jesus says, if you say to the mountain, be the removed, be cast into the sea, and you do not doubt in your heart, well, sick heart will doubt. A yeah. sick heart will fail. It can't carry the promises of God. It can't carry the peace of God. It will fail from yeah. fatigue. Right. It can't carry that peace. Right. It doesn't have peace. Right. And so what you're actually saying, Lisa, is you're saying, guard your heart. Like Absolutely. when you turn that phone on in the morning and you put it right to social media, you're going to get all kinds of bad news. Yeah. John, can I share a crazy story of something that happened Absolutely. with us in our early 20s, Yeah, which a lot of times people don't even believe that John and I ever were early 20s. But <clears throat> John and I, we had we were living in Dallas, Texas at the time, and John had this incredible privilege that we would host the guest speakers coming through the church. Oh, yeah. And there was one particular oh, yeah. minister who I was actually scared of. He was always, he had been a missionary in the Philippines for a long time. He was always talking about He was known demons. all over the, almost all over yeah. the globe. His ministry was that big. He was gruff. Yep. He was direct. Yep. And, and, <laughs> and again, you know, he said that he wanted you and I to go to breakfast with him. Which amazed me. I remember the first time he flew in, he flew in in his ministry's plane and he looked at me and said, I don't want anybody five minutes late. Why do you think I fly this plane? Because my time is important. I have much to do in building the kingdom of God. And he said, that goes for you, young man. And I was like, oh my gosh. And But then we I became very close with him. I remember him yelling at you at a stoplight. 
he was colorblind <laughs> and he was like, aren't you going? <laughs> and, I said, and, I said, sir, no. it's, it's red. And then his, <laughs> and his, his pilot tried to cover for the fact that he was colorblind by saying, oh, I think maybe the, the lights, lights are, are configured reversed in our different in, in our, our state. state. <laughs> but okay. So anyway, he asked, he asked John and I to go to breakfast and I just remember like praying over myself, making sure I didn't have any demons because I thought he's going to cast out this demon at this restaurant. <laughs> I, I had you pray for me. And we go to this breakfast and his whole demeanor changed. Yeah, he was he very went from tender. being gruff to being super tender with us. And he said, I want to, he said, he, he perceived that the hand of God was on our lives. And he said, I want to share some of the things I've seen coming in the future with you too. Now, please re remind everybody what year this is. Probably was. 1984. 85, right in there. Uh, yeah, I think it was 84 because I was trying to figure out when I was pregnant with Addison. Okay. I wasn't pregnant yet. Yep. So let's say 1984, 85, and he told us a number of things. Uh, some of them were so horrific in that moment. We, we actually didn't believe that they would come true. But he actually said to you and I, I see a day coming where people's lives will be controlled by a box they hold in their hands. And, you know, like John and I, 1984, 1985. There weren't we even thinking, computers. We, we didn't have a computer. We didn't have laptops. No. Yeah. We thought he was talking about a box. Like a box, a literal box. And he said, you know, they'll they'll go to their box and the box will tell them how to do this or what to respond or what. And, and we thought, bless him. He's yeah. senile. Because he was probably in his 80s or 70s. And we were like, he, you know, we love him. It's time. It's time for him to, it's time for him to, to go to an old people's home. But anyway, Lisa, he wasn't wrong. He was totally he wasn't right on. Wrong. There were a lot and of other things he told it, us that was have come to pass since. Yeah. And some of them were terrifying. I mean, I, like I had to pray after he told me these things, but most of them have happened. But in 2020, I remember you and I looked at each other and we said, we were told this, that a day was coming where people's lives are going to be controlled by a box they hold in their hands. And I don't know. Smartphones. If, if, yes. But here, here's the thing. 2020 was a test for all of us. And some of us did well and some of us did not do well. I'm going to say there were things that I failed on and then there were lessons I learned in that season. But what we learned is in 2020, if you didn't say something around something, you got attacked. If you said something and you didn't say it exactly how people wanted you to say it, you got attacked. If, you know, I mean, it was a constant playing to a audience that would not be pleased, constant division, constant stress. We were fed nonstop diets of people dying, pandemic, uh, Black Lives Matter. We had people, you know, we saw the racial tension, but that we never saw resolution. Yeah. We never saw resolution. We went to bed every night without resolution. And that I think is what causes this constant crisis fatigue, never having resolution. And, and the truth is like John and I watch news even now, but we watch the news for information and we take that information to Jesus for resolution. And so, so many of us, we forget he is the Prince of Peace. And he is the one that warned us, hey, this is going to all happen. I mean, I wish he didn't say, because all of this has to happen. He was like, okay. He said, see, you're not troubled. All these things must come to pass. He's saying, this is, this is what has to happen. But he's saying, put your heart in me. So the key is not being troubled. Right. Now, there is another place in scripture that Jesus gives us instruction. So this is... Oh, yeah, right okay. here. Mark 4, verse 24. <laughs> so sorry, guys. He said to his disciples, these are the people that are following him, take heed what you hear. In other words, let's put it in today's vernacular, wait, wait. So be let's... careful to what you're listening to. So really, John, what he's saying is you have the right to edit what you hear. Yeah. And you also have the right to not listen to some things. Right. Both. Yeah. Okay. So take heed what you hear, because with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. Now, Lisa, I'm going to be a little vulnerable. Um, I kind of went down a rabbit hole in 20 for the 2020 election. Well, I think everybody did. I especially did. <laughs> there were so many conspiracy. I do remember you uh, telling us there was conspiracies a lot of being s spoken, conspiracy theories being spoken. I started listening to people that 
I consider to be pretty credible as far as in our government's eyes. I mean, and I was so consumed that I was losing my joy. I wasn't, the word wasn't as rich to me. I mean, now stop and think about well, again, it. Again, you're reactionary. All this stuff that happened in 2020 that I was paying attention to, it's all gone. It's done. It's over. Okay. And I'm, I'm still here on the earth today. Jesus is still sitting on the throne, but I lost a lot of time in thinking, oh my goodness, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if this happens? So what's happening with my heart? It's getting weaker and weaker because Jesus says, this is so powerful. This is all in Mark 4. He said, the cares of this world will enter in and choke the word. Now, here's Jesus who says, my word will never fail. Not one question mark or period right. of my word will fail. Heaven and earth can even pass away. This whole thing, everything can be obliterated, but my word will stand. So I, here I am today, four years, three, year, three and a half years later. His word is still standing. Actually, it's four years later because I know it was three and a half years later. His word is still it's true. It's very important. <clears throat> and a lot of the stuff I was so concerned about, it's, it's gone. Okay. Yeah. Have things been affected in our society? Sure. But guess what? His word is still true. That's why we are people. We are a people that are supposed to stand out. We can have joy when men's hearts are failing them, when people are filled with fears and anticipation of terrible things that are going to happen on the earth. So <clears throat> we got to pay attention. We got to pay close attention to what we're listening to. And I think that's so true, what you said, because there is a goal of the enemy, and you find it in Daniel 7, 25, and you find it only in the English Standard Version, but it said one of the goals of the Antichrist. Now, remember, the, there is an Antichrist spirit in the earth. Yeah. Antichrist spirit that wants to pull you away from the Christ's words. The goal of the Antichrist, or actually what the Antichrist spirit would do, according to Daniel 7, 25, is it would wear out the saints. Yeah. Now, that's crisis fatigue. Mm -hmm. One crisis after another crisis after another crisis, it's wearing people out. Yeah. Well, and you know, I find that despair and discouragement are more destructive forces of the enemy than almost anything else. When people are wrestling with despair and discouragement, when they are constantly inundated with that kind of messaging, they give up. And the truth is that we were born and made for this time. Yeah. And and I I feel like a lot of people they they want to make a difference. They they want to be heroes. But if you want to make a difference and you want to be heroes, you got to go to who the Bible calls a hero. The Bible says the godly are my heroes. And so we don't we don't play to an audience of people. We ask God, what are you doing? in this time period. You know, I'm thinking about when we had Ellis's dad come in. He he said what you have to do is control the controllables. There are things in your life that are within your control. How you love your husband, how you love your wife, how you love your children, how you love create your neighbor. Your neighbor. And and again going back to that, the Bible is so clear. If you see I had your that brother come in up need, this morning. if you see, like, it needs to be people that you can see and touch. Yes, we do things. John and I will forever do things for people we'll never meet. But you also need to do things for people that you do meet. You need to be there for them. That's actually going to make you feel like you have some kind of power when you connect with other people in a constructive, healthy way. When you get outside of yourself and say, how are you doing? What can I do for you? How can I help you? How can I bring peace to your life? You want to come over to my house. You want to be part of a prayer meeting. Do you want to be part of a Bible? Study? Whatever it is that is in your hand, maybe you're just a young mom and you just take another mom out for a walk or a, a couple just, hey, how are you guys doing? Because the tension on the outside of our life it, it is something that we can survive as long as there isn't a storm inside of our house. You know, Lisa, um, in 2020, if you would have gotten near me, the people that got near me, all they were hearing about is, well, this emergency thing might we come did, on your we phone. We did try to stop or you. Or this is we going to, to happen you. and this is going to happen. And they wouldn't hear the word of God from me. Yeah. And Lisa, I'm sorry yeah. to say that was a time period of, of a couple months yeah. in which it wasn't, the word of Christ w wasn't richly well, dwelling we in me. we were all reactionary. 
in yeah, it wasn't it wasn't richly dwelling in me. Yeah. Remember the Bible says in, in Colossians 3, mm-hmm. let the word of Christ richly dwell in you. If it richly dwells in you, that's what comes out. So now here we are dealing with, I'm dealing with my neighbors, the people that I'm seeing every day at the grocery store in this. And what comes out of my mouth first? Oh man, this is going on. I think this emergency broadcast may come and this might happen at the White House and all this stuff. Instead of being in tune with the spirit of God and saying to th- what, to those people the things they need to hear that ministers to them. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't paying attention close enough to what I was hearing, and that's what was coming out. Even our family dinners, you remember it? I do, I do, I do, I do remember. I, and so you know, I think we but, we okay, need to carry this on to do. the next because w- w- there's so much a, more. In- yeah, I want to give them a practical takeaway. Yep. So again, I'm going to charge you to surround yourself with like-minded people, community of faith. Not people that are going to lay more fears on you, but people that are going to stand with you. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to ask you to be part of a prayer group. I'm going to ask you to move outside of yourself because when fear takes over, everything is self-focused. What about me? What about mine? What about my stuff? What about my my job? I want you to move outside of yourself. And you're, you're going to be shocked that as you move outside of yourself, you're going to find that actually you get free from some of the fatigue that you're sensing right now. The other thing is pray for the peace of this earth. Pray. We pray. Messenger International, we pray every Monday through Friday. And don't pray your feelings. Something I love that you did yesterday during prayer, John, is you said, hey, there is a heaviness. The enemy wants to put a heaviness on all of us so that we are weighed down. And God is saying to all of us, you need to lift your voice. You need to lift your head. You need to pray my word. So get into the word of God. Take heed what you're hearing. Edit what comes in. Allow the word of God to have preeminence in your life. And you'll be shocked at how much that will counteract the crisis fatigue. But I know we just barely touched, touched on it. this. Yeah. Barely, barely. I think we need to do another podcast on this. Absolutely. and Because there's so much more the Lord was showing me before the yep. podcast that I I didn't even touch on no, yet. No, I think and it's I know important. you too. Yep. So let me just say thanks for tuning in. And uh, we'll, we'll pick this up on the next podcast. And please, again, remember to rate, review, and subscribe. Now, this testimony yep. that Lisa, we have, we have given close to 6 million resources to the people of Iran. We have done a lot of that through Messenger X, but the wonderful news is Messenger X is in English. And so if you haven't done it, download Messenger X. Just go to the App Store, go to Google Play if you've got an Android, type in Messenger X, no space between the R and the X, download it. We have over 40 courses in English. We have five books, entire books, audio books on there. We have stuff for children. We have so much for you. We have stuff for your marriage. I I know Addison just shared with the whole team. He was just with the senior pastor. Mm He said that senior pastor said, I'm on Messenger X every day and it's discipling me. I love that. There is another pastor we know, senior pastor, large church. First thing he does when people get saved, they bring them back, they pray with them to receive the Spirit of God, and then he says, now pull out your phones and download Messenger X, and he said, we use it to disciple our new converts. So get it, and also share it with everybody you know. So Yeah, and right now, these resources are available for everyone in the Middle East, in Arabic, Farsi, Urdu. Yeah. We've got them in Israeli. They are there, and so believing that people are going to reach out to God and experience the gospel. And there's no charge for the app. So we love you guys. And until next time, this has been Conversations with John and Lisa. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Conversations with John and Lisa Bevere. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and rate this podcast wherever you love to listen. Also, if you haven't already, go right ahead and download Messenger X to hear more content from John and Lisa Bevere and other great messengers. Again, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time on Conversations with John and Lisa.